Hey guys, uh, in this video I'm going to talk about two-dimensional kinematic motion. Uh, so just like one-dimensional kinematic motion, recall that uh, I worked on the assumption that the acceleration is constant, that is the acceleration does not depend on time, and that's the same assumption I'm going to be using uh, when we study two-dimensional kinematic motion. So recall that we had the set of kinematic equations shown here. Uh, this tells us the position as a function of time, this tells us the velocity as a function of time. The uh, variables that go into the kinematic equations are the acceleration in that direction, the initial velocity in that direction, the initial position in that direction, and whatever time we're talking about. So luckily, going from one dimension to two dimensional motion conceptually is actually very simple. Uh, if you have an acceleration or a velocity that is not just in one dimension, say it's not just in x, but it's in x and y, then you just have another set of two kinematic equations, which looks exactly like these, except with all these x's replaced with whatever the other direction is, say y. And the idea is that they work completely independently. Uh, so that's very easy to describe and very easy to write down. The challenge comes when solving problems. Uh, but actually just writing down the kinematic equations in more than one dimension is actually pretty easy, so let me just show that to you. Okay, so what kind of physical situation am I talking about when I say two-dimensional kinematic motion? So let's start with a point-like object moving with some arbitrary velocity, um, some arbitrary initial velocity. That is, at t equals zero, uh, the velocity is in this direction and of that magnitude. Now let's say this object also has an acceleration, which is pointed in a different direction than the velocity. So first let's try to imagine or guess uh, the motion of this object. What will the trajectory of this object be? Well, okay, so we know things about velocities. Uh, if this velocity is right here and the acceleration was not here, the object would be here after some time, then would be here after some time, then here after some time, and so on. But now we have an acceleration. Acceleration is a change in velocity. So recall the definition looks something like that. Rewriting the delta as vf minus vi, I can now rearrange this to solve for vf. So all I did, all I did to do that is just multiply times delta t to get it over there, and then move the, the i over there. So now notice what I have is I have an initial velocity, I'm adding the acceleration vector times some time, and that gives me the final velocity. So in this case, I can start with my initial velocity, add the acceleration times some arbitrary time, and if I just take time to be like one, then I can just add this acceleration vector to the end of my velocity vector, and then I can see that my final velocity is gonna look something like, like that. So when my object travels from here to here, its new velocity vector will, instead of being this again, will be this instead. So if I draw a point to represent that, start here, and here my new velocity vector looks like like that because I just transported this guy up there. And then instead of continuing to move in the same direction, the object now has changed directions. And I can continue to play this game by saying, okay, the new velocity vector is the old one plus the acceleration. There's my acceleration vector. There's my new final velocity vector. So when the point, when the, uh, point mass makes it to here, it has a new final velocity, which looks like right there is the new initial velocity vector. I'm just going to continue to play this game to flesh out the motion of this object. Okay, so the motion of this object is obviously pretty complicated, but the point is that it is definitely in more than one dimension. So I should write out um, my acceleration and my initial velocity in a two-dimensional vector form if I'm going to start to understand it. And now I'm going to need more than just kinematics in one dimension to solve the problem because I obviously have motion in the other dimension. So here's the kinematic equation in one direction. Uh, I have the acceleration in the x direction, the initial velocity in the x direction, and the position, the initial position in the x direction. So I should probably put a vector representing the initial position of the object as well. All right, so there we go. Uh, it's common that we can pick both of these values to be zero, but of course that's not necessarily the case. So this is the initial position vector. Here's the initial position in the x direction, initial position in the y direction. So the point is that this, these two equations completely describe the motion in the x direction. For instance, this x position will be there, 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 a little forward, and then a little backwards, and a little further backwards, because along the x 
direction, if I have a nice little coordinate system like this, this object is moving forwards, 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 a little forwards, backwards, backwards. And these equations will describe that motion. But we also have a vertical motion, which the object is going up, up, and then down, 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 and that would be described by another copy of these in the x direction. Fortunately, like I said, it's very easy to get that. Just exchange all the x's here with y's, just like that. So let me put a box around those as our two-dimensional kinematic equations. So conceptually, the only new piece here is that the equations of motion are the same in both the horizontal and the vertical directions, in both the x direction and the y direction. You can see that nearly all the variables between these two pairs are different. Here we have all x things, here we have all y things. That's how I generated this pair from this pair. I just replaced all the x's with the y's. There's one uh, important uh, exception to that, and that is that the time. So there's the time here, here, and here, and that's the exact same time that shows up in the y equation. So that's an important piece of this. The time connects the kinematic equations in a different direction. So you can't necessarily just solve the equations completely independently. In some cases you can, but in many cases, because time shows up in every single equation, you will often need to find the time in order to solve these kinds of problems. But other than that, uh, there's really no other conceptual uh, advances that are in these equations. You can use all the techniques for word problems that you've used in the past. Write down the knowns, write down the unknowns, make sure you have the right number of equations to solve your problem, and proceed with an algebraic solution. And that's the vast majority of what we're going to do with these equations. There is one very special example of two-dimensional motion, and that is projectile motion. And you will find that we will be doing a number of, of problems in projectile motion to get a handle on the two-dimensional kinematic equations. Okay, great. Thank you for watching. This has been the two-dimensional kinematic equations, and I will see you next time.